Hello, everyone. Today is Tuesday, June 7th, uh, 2022. And uh, thanks for joining us today for this NEMSIS public training, an introduction to the agency location and public motor vehicle crash dashboards. Um, today, Laurie Lundy, is our state support specialist with the NEMSIS TAC, is going to provide an overview of the agency location and public motor vehicle dash crash board. Uh, da crash dashboards i'm gonna fix that in editing <laughs> and the tools are available and the tools that are available to stakeholders as they utilize these resources uh, she's also going to review these features uh, available on nemesis dashboards including using filters how to locate inclusion and exclusion criteria running running reports and signing up for subscriptions um, just to make a note at the beginning of this, uh, the agency location dashboard does require a state authorized user account, but the public motor vehicle crash dashboard is available to everyone. So please, uh, we consider these, um, uh, these topics a conversation. So if you have a question, please utilize the chat feature in Zoom or come off of mute and ask your questions. Uh, and good morning to you, Brad, already using the, uh, using the, the chat function. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Lori. Uh, Lori, go ahead and take it away. Sounds good. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. And I am excited to join you guys today. You may um, notice my name is different in Zoom than it is on the screen. I was recently married, so you may know me as Lori Brat, but um, new name, Lori Lundy. And I'm excited to um, give you an overview of these dashboards and share with you, share with you some things that I have learned in um, digging into them and learning about them. And hopefully what you learn today will make them more useful for you in the future. We are gonna go over two different dashboards today, the agency location, as well as the public motor vehicle crash dashboard. And you do need state login credentials to view the, the agency location dashboard. And the second dashboard we look at is open to the public. So that is available um, to anyone if you wanna share it. If you meet with people that are doing research about motor vehicle crash um, incidences, it's a great resource to share. And, and you'll see, especially that dashboard has a lot of depth to it and a lot of um, capability to run reports and, and pull data that's very useful. Second thing we want to look at today are uh, companion guides, kind of what they are, where to find them, and a little overview of the companion guides um, for the dashboards that we will review today. I also want to go over running reports. I know I, I noticed some of the people joining us today are newer state data managers, and you may or may not have done this yet or know how to do this, but there's, there's great ways to um, download information, turn it into Excel sheets, and run reports, and we'll look at how to do that today. There's also the capability of subscribing to these dashboards if it's something that you want to have an update in your email box um, weekly or regularly, we can show you how to do that. And then we also will jump into um, several filters in these dashboards that can give you different visualizations as you click on them. So those are some of our objectives. Let me pause for a second and ask, does anyone have any questions yet before we jump in? Okay, our first dashboard we're gonna look at today, and I would encourage you if you want to um, go to our website and walk along with me as we, as we look at these, you can play around with them as I'm demonstrating. I encourage you to do that. And this will be recorded. So if you want to reference it later, um, you can go back and remember what we said and replay it. So there's no need to take notes or worry about that as we're presenting. A little background first on the agency location dashboard is that it was created relatively recently within um, as a response to the COVID pandemic and states were looking for information on agencies in their state and where they were located and the volume of calls that they were that they were getting and tracking. And so this dashboard was created in response to that. And some of the inclusion criteria is that it does look at location and volume of PCRs by county. And so you'll see in a minute, as we look at it, you can see um, as a state manager, you'll be able to see your state 
we will see from a national level, we can see a national view as well. And it does that based on incident zip codes. So EC19 and also um, agency number, eResponse 01. And then there's several details included on this board that are pulled from the agency um, 19 through 14. And the time frame for this dashboard is that it goes back two years prior, as well as um, however far we are through this year. So for, for um, example, currently it shows about two and a half years worth of data. And as it rolls through the year, it will show at any time between two and three years of data. And then this dashboard also is refreshed each weekend. So if you check it out at the beginning of the week, you can know that it has been recently updated. All right, let me pull over our website now. And if you uh, want to follow along with me, if you just go to nemsys.org, there's a few different ways to find these dashboards. My favorite way to get there is to go to view reports. And then if you go down to state reports, from there, if you click on version three dashboards, and from there, if you scroll down, First one we'll look at is the second dashboard listed here, the agency location dashboard. And you can see there's two links here. There's the dashboard, and then there's also the companion guide listed below it. And we'll spend a little bit of time looking at this companion guide. Um, for, the second companion, for the second dashboard, excuse me, we'll spend a little more time looking at the companion guide. It's much more extensive for that one. Um, and I do wanna give Chris a shout out and a thanks here as well. If you click on the, um, the dashboard itself, there now is a link to the companion guide at the top of the dashboard. So if it's, if it's a, a dashboard that you use often and maybe you've bookmarked it and um, you open up the dashboard, the companion guide is, is really easy to find as a link on the top of the page. Previously, you had to go back to um, our website and open the companion guide separately. But now there's a link to it right here. So you can click on that and I have it open here already um, to look at. And I can give you just a, a quick glimpse of this user guide. As with all of our um, all of our dashboards, do usually come with a companion guide, and at the top there's a little index. You can, if there's one section that you want to read about, you can click on it, and it takes you to that section. And then in the top, there's usually a little introduction, which we have discussed already. A little bit of um, inclusion criteria, time frame when it when the dashboard refreshes. That kind of information can be found there, and then elements of the dashboard. It, it talks about several things that we will show you today as far as how to utilize the filters and how to um, dig a little deeper and get more information out of these dashboards. And so um, if you're ever looking at a dashboard and it, it doesn't seem self-explanatory, I would say go to the companion guide first and chances are you should be able to find the question that you have in your companion guide. If not, I would say reach out to us because we want to make sure that everything is included in these. And, and that's a lot of what I've been doing recently is going through and updating and adding information. So if you're looking at a dashboard and have questions or find a mistake, I would really appreciate it if you'd reach out and let us know. And we, um, we'd love to add to that and, and make it more clear and answer your questions in the companion guide whenever possible. So let's jump into this dashboard. And I want to um, give a thanks, first of all, to, to um, Felicia in Utah. She gave us permission to share Utah's information today. So thank you for that, Felicia. I'm not sure if you're here with us. And um, you will be able to see, as I said, if you're a state data manager, you'll be able to see your state. And um, let me show you some things as, as a national level here. We, 
I can click on, I can show you quickly here, I can click on all states and see um, a national view of agencies and where they're located as well. But for today, we're gonna look at Utah. And with most filters on our dashboards as well, if you see, I just clicked on what I, what I want to see. And then to close the filter, you often have to click on the bar up here on the top just to make the drop down go away um, if that's something you're looking at. You can see here, um, based on color, you can, you can tell how many patient care reports have been submitted in those counties. And so you can see in Utah, Salt Lake County, um, some of the bigger cities are located in the center of the state here, and that's why they're darker. Some of the more rural counties on the edge here have smaller populations and they're lighter in color because they have less EMS agencies located in those areas. On the right hand side of this dashboard, there's also information on those counties. As we said previously, this is taken from D agency 14 um, through D agency, or sorry, D agency nine through D agency 14 is where this information comes from. And you can hover over these visualizations and it gives you more details. So for example, if I'm looking at Utah currently, I can see how many of my agencies are completely volunteer. So 6% of our agencies are completely volunteer, 18% are non-volunteer or paid positions. And then the majority, 76% are mixed with some paid and some volunteer positions. And if you want more information, you can click on that. And then you'll see um, you have to click and kind of slowly move your mouse. If you move too quickly, this box will disappear. But if you click and move slowly, you can see you can um, keep only this, exclude this, and then to the right, it looks like a small graph here and it says view data. And this is where you're gonna go on all of our dashboards to really dig in and see um, a lot of the details behind the visualization that you're seeing. So if you click on view data for a moment, This gives you um, a brief summary, but if you click on the second tab that says full data, you can see this, this gives you a summary of all um, agencies that we were looking at. Let's see, I think we were looking at which ones that were mixed with both volunteer and paid, <coughs> excuse me. And you can see um, details on them. And so it gives you the agency number, how many activations they've had during that time period, which is um, currently the last, as we mentioned, about two and a half years this is pulling from. And if you click this box on the top that <clears throat> says to show all columns, it will give you even more information on those agencies. Um, it will give you here the organization type, if it's private or public, if it's um, tax exempt or not, if it is um, all kinds of information. So that, that is really helpful to know. Let me give you another example. Um, once, you, once you've clicked on it, it's gonna remain highlighted like that. And right now we're looking at just those mixed agencies. And so I wanna click on it again to make it unhighlight. If sometimes my dashboard I know will kind of freeze with something highlighted and another way to go back or reset is to go to the Tableau um, bar here. It's located on the, on the bottom of the page. And if you go to either refresh, we'll often take you back a step and refresh your screen, or you can um, undo or revert. Often we'll take you back a step as well to what you were looking at previously. So let me go down on the right-hand side here. It, it does show, as we mentioned, um, percentage of your agencies that are volunteer paid or mixed. And then the, the next pie chart here shows you their tax status. Are they not for profit? Um, are they a for-profit organization? Are they a government organization? 
Next shows organization type. Is it a, a fire department? You can see the majority here in Utah, 57% of our agencies are fire departments or related with a fire department. And then some are non-fire, um, some are hospital, and then others are private, non-hospital. And then the level of service that, that is provided. So AEMT, is a majority here in Utah with 41%, 34% um, paramedic, and then um, EMT, physician assistant, registered nurse. So of those agencies, what level of service is provided or available through their agency? And then the primary type of service is the last thing shown here. And, and this shows a majority of 911 response with transport, so 61%. <clears throat> 43, um, 43 agencies and 30% responded um, without transport, and then 6% are air medical, and so on. So that gives you some, um, some detailed information, and that information, again, can also be found um, at the bottom of this page, and then by clicking on it, on any of these graphs, you can, you can run that report and see that data in more detail. Let me show you one more thing I just thought of. As you, as you do click on that and you view the data, go to the second tab here with full data. I'm gonna show all columns to get a lot of details. And down on the bottom, I forgot to mention, you can also download all the rows as a text file. And so if you want to download this into an Excel sheet or something else that you can use to manipulate the data and, and share it and sort it and run reports and whatever you'd like to do, that's very easy to do here as well. So again, these things that you're seeing today really apply to many of our dashboards, not just these two that we're demonstrating. Um, but once, once you kind of learn the ins and outs of Nemesis dashboards and Tableau dashboards, you'll be able to navigate um, several of them easily. Let's look at the map for a minute here. And if you hover over, let's look at Salt Lake County, for example, where many of us here at the TAC live. If you hover over, you can see it's one of the darker shaded, it's one of the more populous counties. And if I click on that county, it will do a few things. It will change my filters over on the right-hand side. Um, so now I'm looking at just Salt Lake County and I can see instead of statewide, I can see in Salt Lake County, what percentage of my agencies are non-volunteer. So you can see there's more paid, <coughs> more paid agencies here in the city than there are nation, or excuse me, than there are statewide or in more rural areas, which would make sense. Um, as I right click on it, I also can um, read a little bit more just about that county. So I can see how many PCRs have come in in the last two and a half years, the number of agencies that are submitting data um, to the state and to NEMSIS. And then um, just the name of that county is listed there too. I can do a few things. I can keep only this county. Um, I can click on it again to go back to the state. I can also search an area if I want to, let's say, just look at um, data for the, the lower quadrant of the state or the lower section here. I can click and highlight just those counties and then you can see the graphs on the right-hand side of the dashboard refreshed again um, to, to reflect information now on just the counties that I have highlighted. I also can do the same thing. I can run reports now just on those counties that I've highlighted um, by slowly moving from what I have highlighted over to this box and then over to that view data button again um, can give me that information. Any questions so far on this on this dashboard? Let me ask this. I know we do have a lot of state data managers on the call. Is there anything that you see potentially being helpful or useful or ideas of how you may be able to use this information that you could share with others?
Has anyone had a chance to explore the dashboard much yet? Guys, you're quiet this morning. All right, I'm going to keep going. I'll come back with some more um, questions or feel free to interrupt or raise a hand. Um, put a message in chat if you have questions as well. All right, I'm going to move on. Let me just double check. I think that's all I wanted to show you from this dashboard. Yes, I believe so. So the second dashboard we're going to look at today, let me give you a few overvotes overview notes first is the public motor vehicle crash dashboard. And a little bit of history here. This dashboard was first created around 2017, and it's been recently revised and updated, and we will um, look at some of those changes today. Some of the inclusion criteria used in the creation of the dashboard is that it was um, information pulled from eResponse 05, so the type of service requested was a 911 response. Um, from e-disposition 12, the incident and patient disposition was that patient contact was made. So it excluded calls where patient contact was not made from a call. And then um, e-injury 01 was listed as, as a motor vehicle related accident. And so you'll see in the filters, you can filter um, what that means, but all of the calls were, were involving a motor vehicle of some sort. And this dashboard is different. The first one we looked at showed about two and a half years worth of data. This dashboard sets to one prior year of data. And um, I will show you that that date can also be shortened, but it cannot be extended. So the maximum it can show is one year of data, um, but you can view a shorter time period within the previous year if you want to. This dashboard is also refreshed each weekend. So if you look at it on a Monday morning or you want to subscribe and get it sent to you every Monday morning, you can know it's the most current information um, that's been updated recently. This dashboard is similar to the state version three motor vehicle crash dashboard. The difference is that the state version is going to only allow state data managers to view it and only allow you to view information um, on your state. And so the one we're looking at today is public and it is not, um, not able to be filtered by state, but it is able to be filtered by region. And so I can show you that. And let's go back to um, the NEMSIS homepage again here. If you wanna join me and, and walk through where to find it, you're welcome to. And I'm gonna to go to view reports again. This time, instead of state reports, we're going to go to the, uh, the very first one down, which is public reports. After you click on public reports, you can go to version three dashboards, click on that, and you will see a list here of dashboards that are available to the public. And we're gonna scroll down a little bit to the public motor vehicle crash dashboard. And again, there's a dashboard and a user guide. Um, Chris has been very, kind again to post that companion guide on the top of the dashboard as well. Let me give you just a quick overview of this dashboard and then I wanna spend a little bit of time going through the companion guide because there's a lot of very helpful information and links that we've added there that will make this dashboard easier to understand when we do look at it. Um, but just as a, as a quick glimpse here, you can see it gives you on the top the data set size, <clears throat> the number of calls, and, and um, this filter on the top does, does show, as I mentioned, about one year previous of data. If you want to filter it, let's say we want to change it to the beginning of 2022. I can click on this box and change it to January 1st. 2022, 
and then the page will reset or refresh to show this year. And so the bars on the right hand side, so the show the total total number of all motor vehicle crashes about 1.4 million. And then of those in the um, in the last since the beginning of 2022 in the last six months or so have been um, a little over half a million. And let me show you one more thing before I forget or while I'm thinking of it. And that is how to subscribe. All of our dashboards offer this feature and it is helpful if it's something that you wanna keep tabs on or you want a, a weekly or regular report or update on. If you click on this subscribe button and sometimes this toolbar shows up on the bottom of the page, sometimes it shows up on the top of the page. Here it's on the bottom. But if you click on subscribe, it gives you two options. You can subscribe to either this view, which is kind of the main view. Some dashboards have several tabs. And so you may want to subscribe to the entire workbook if you want all the information sent to you or just this view. And then you can choose the format if you want an image or a PDF or both. And you can write yourself a little message, a reminder of what it is you're looking for, what you may wanna check for on this dashboard. You can set the frequency of when you want it. Do you want it when it refreshes or on a selected schedule? If you do a selective schedule, it gives you several options of when you want it sent to you. And then you just subscribe. And as long as you are um, signed in and logged in when you do that, then we will give you regular updates um, as this dashboard refreshes. So that is how to subscribe. Let's jump over now to the companion document. So again, that um, was listed on the previous page and there also is a link to it right here. Again, there's kind of a table of contents on the top if you want to click on and jump to a certain part of the companion guide. Otherwise, it goes through an introduction, a little bit of um, an overview of, of what this dashboard is used for, who the audience is, is often described there. Some of the inclusion criteria and filters, which we have discussed already. Um, the date range is defined there. And then there's also a link to the NEMSIS data dictionary. And so if, if you're looking at this and you want a definition of what eDisposition 12 is or um, eInjury 01, your response 05, you can click on there and get more details, more of a, more of an, a complete definition of the elements. Scrolling down the next section here, you can see in the dashboard, or we will see in a minute when we go back, that you can filter by type of motor vehicle accident. You can look at just bus accidents, just car accidents, just motorcycle accidents um, involving a truck or van, and you can filter in that way. This information, the type of type of injury from e injury one comes from the ICD-10 data. And so we've included a link here to get more information, more description on those ICD-10 codes. And then there also is a table that shows how those codes are mapped um, to injuries. And so if you click on this link, it will give you more information. Let me click on here and show you um, real quickly. And so, for example, it shows you here um, the ICD-10 ICD um, code, and then it shows if it was a motor, motor vehicle accident or not, and then um, the type of accident. And so that shows you how, how we determined essentially the, the types to filter by here and how they are connected to the ICD-10 codes. 
Next section is incident patient disposition um, based on e-disposition 12. There's several things you can filter there. Urbanicity, if you want a definition of how we defined urban and suburban, you can click on this link here. It takes you to the USDA Urban Influence Codes, and um, that gives definitions of that there. As I mentioned, this public dashboard is different than the state dashboard because it does not filter by state. It does filter by region. And so as you look at this, you may wonder what, um, what region involves which state or which states are part of which region. And that is defined here. If you click on NITS or regions, it will show you which states um, fall under which region. And then the date, we talked about that a little bit already, that it is one year prior, although it can be shortened using um, this adjustment here, using that date slider. The data set size, I showed you this on the dashboard a little bit as well, but the the black bar on the right-hand side, if you hover over that on the dashboard, it'll give you the, the maximum number. So for example, the, the maximum number here were 54 states and territories submitted. But when you filtered by motorcycle accidents, there must be one territory that did not have any motorcycle accidents or did not report any. And so it shows 53 out of 54 states reporting motorcycle accidents during that time frame. Um, let's see, demographics. So you can filter here by age and gender, uh, or it is filtered by age and gender, I should say. And it, it um, explains here in the companion guide where that comes from. So for example, it comes from ePatient 15 and ePatient 16, gender is ePatient 13, and then you can refer to the data dictionary um, link as well if you want more of a definition of those elements. Race is taken from ePatient 14. And time is shown in a few different ways. It shows the date and time of dispatch. And you can see the times of the day when, um, I believe this was filtered by motorcycles as well, but when most of the incidents occurred between 12, 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. and less occurred between midnight and 6 a.m. So you can see that based on percentages as well as by the shading and the color um, displayed there. The next, pat, the next section, excuse me, shows um, potentially over, this is tw the last 12 months, so the last one year, and it shows the year 2021 in blue and the year 2022 in purple. And so that's why you see the two different colors there. And then it shows um, the percent the percentage of incidences that happened each month. This next section, you can filter um, by scene response time, scene time, and transport time. And so again, on the dashboard, there's not much explanation given for those for those filters. But if you look here in the companion guide, you can get a detailed explanation. So for example, scene time is defined as the duration between when the unit arrived on scene, the date and time from E times 06, and when the unit left the scene, date and time from E times 09. And so that's a definition of what you're filtering when you filter screen time, or excuse me, scene time, not screen time. And then at the bottom of the graph here, um, you can filter again by um, transport time. Um, nope, sorry, this is the same, same as above. This is the visualization for what we have, what we've filtered up above. The next section is the probability of survival. And this information is taken from a revised trauma score that is used essentially to calculate the, the approximate probability of survival. And so if based on different things like coma scale and blood pressure and respiratory rate, if it's determined that their probability, probability of survival is 36.1% or less, then that patient is transported ideally to a trauma one um, care center. And so it shows, this was filtered again, I believe by motorcycle accidents. Um, 
but it shows how many of, of the total incidences were considered um, higher risk with a, a lower probability of survival. And then it shows um, over a million of them were 98%, 98.8% survival. So some injuries obviously have very minimal um, minimal accident or minimal um, trauma. And then other accidents that are more severe have, have a much higher trauma scale or higher, higher level of trauma. So that's explained more in this section. And then there's two sections on the bottom that show the injury risk factor. And this shows um, based on, let's see, CDC 2011 guidelines. It's from the field triage of injured patients. And there's a link here to those guidelines and how they're defined. So when it is a motor vehicle accident, they also pay attention to if there was an ejection, if there was a death um, in the same vehicle of someone else that's, that's um, noted here as well and can be found in this visualization. And then the last one on the bottom of the page shows the type um, of drug or alcohol that was indicated. And the percentage on the top, again, this is not explained on the dashboard itself. And so the companion guide is, is very useful here to know that this percentage on the top is the type of drug and, and alcohol um, or sorry, it's the percentage of drug and alcohol where there was any indication um, of it being used was a, of all the crashes, it, it was a total of almost 10% of the time. And then of that 10%, it's broken down to how many times did the uh, person admit to alcohol use? How many times um, was there drug paraf paraphernalia on the scene? Things like that is broken down. And then on the bottom of all the companion guides, there is just a review of kind of Tableau and that Tableau toolbar that we looked at briefly on the bottom. And so if you want um, some more detail about how to use the revert and refresh and um, pause buttons, those are defined here. All right, let's go back. There's also some contact information for Kevin and Laurel and all of us here at the Nemesis TAC if you um, want to reach out. If you find, again, if you find anything missing, any mistakes, any questions you have looking at a dashboard that you think um, could be answered for other people, please let us know and we'd love to include that. All right, let's jump into the dashboard itself. We've got about 15 minutes left here. And um, I want to leave some time for questions at the end as well. So again, I've, I've shortened this, uh, this visualization here to show just within 2022. So since January 1st, you can extend that back to June of 2021 if you want to look at that much data. And so out of um, the total 1.4 million of um, total incidences since January 1st, it shows um, a, a total here on this blue bar. And then like many of the dashboards, if you click on or hover over, you can see some more details. So here I can see um, how many total out of how many um, are selected for the time frame that I'm looking at. Down below that is where our filters are. And so as we saw in the companion guide under type, you can filter for um, all types, which it is right now. I may choose just motorcycle here. And then once you choose, you also have to hit apply in order for it to refresh the dashboard. And then you can see our, our charts and graphs down below all changed when I did that. And so now I'm looking at just motorcycle incidences from the beginning of 2022. The next filter shows incident patient disposition. And so you can um, choose to look at just one of these. I will leave them all selected for now. Urbanicity, <clears throat> as we mentioned, the definition of these are, are um, defined more in the companion guide, but you can choose all, or you can choose to look at just rural or just suburban. And then the region, 
um, NHTSA region is the next one. And again, there's 10 regions nationwide that are defined more clearly in the link found in the companion guide. If you wanna know the region of the country where you live, you can look it up that way. In the chart down below, so for example, we're looking at now motorcycle accidents from the beginning of 2022. And I can see here broken out by age, also broken out by uh, female and male by gender. And I can look at colors and quickly see that the highest risk category here, 10.1% were 25 to 25, 25 to 29 year old males. And so that accounted for 2,000 723 out of total, total motor vehicle crashes of 26,000. Um, and so if I click on that, it'll also refresh my dashboard again. Uh, nope, sorry, that one does not refresh the dashboard, sorry. Let me check again. Yes, it does. Okay, I thought it didn't change there. And so as I click on um, that, I can look at that. And now the demographics on the right here have all filtered or changed to show just 25 to 29 year old males. And you can see what percentage um, ethnicity did they fall under? What months were there more accidents? Um, June, we're still getting data in for, but it would make sense that there's more motorcycle accidents in the summer than in the winter months. And so you'd be able to see that in the graphs here. Uh, and once you, once you click on one visualization, like I did here, it's going to stay highlighted. And if you come back and click on it again, it will essentially unhighlight or take off that filter and go back to um, the previous step. So I still have filtered the beginning of the year. I still have motorcycle, but now I've taken it off 25 to 29 year old male. And now I'm seeing all age categories, male and female. Scene response time, this is what we saw defined again in the companion guide in more detail, but you can change this to be um, scene time and it shows an average of maybe 10 to 12 minutes on scene. And it tells you if you, if you hover over, click, um, click on one, it'll give you more details on that. And then the rest of the dashboard again refreshes to show just the number of incidences where they were on scene for 12 minutes. And so if that would be helpful or useful information, you can filter it in that way. Let's look um, down here as well. And probability of survival is the next category. We talked about that a little bit um, with that 36.1% being kind of the defining line between how severe um, of an injury it is if they need to go to a level one trauma center. Those were the, the um, incidences here in red. And then the purple is, is anything above that 36.1%. Type of drug and alcohol indication. So for for motorcycles, it must be slightly higher than it was for motor vehicles in general. And so here it's 11.6%. Um, let me show you again on this graph what we looked at last time. And that is if you want to look at one thing and run a report. So let's go back to the highest category here, which was 10.1%, 25 to 29 year old males. I'm going to click on that and be able to see it update in my dashboard. If I kind of slowly move from this box to the box next to it, give me a second here. you'll see this come up again. And if you go to the far right and click on view data, it's gonna give you again, this, this really in-depth look. If you click on activations on the second tab and show all columns will give you even more information. 
And then I can, um, I can see here, it shows, for example, the, the displayed region. And so if I'm looking at um, NHTSA region five, I can see that the states included there are Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And so that's region five. Um, and so you could sort by region, you could, you could sort by race or gender, whatever you'd like to do on the initial graph. And then you can come over here and choose all columns. You can go to the bottom and download all rows and turn it into an Excel file and make it more editable, more usable, easier to share information and data that way. I think that may be about all I had. Let me see first if we have any questions. I think Kevin and Laurel are here who have spent a lot of time building and developing this dashboard. Is there anything important that I missed that you guys would like to add to, to fill in? Nothing from me, Lori. I thought that was really excellent. Thanks, Kevin. Lori, this is Judy Whitfield. Hi, Judy. Hi, can you, um, maybe I missed it. Can you clarify, can we only get by NHTSA region or can we get state data off of this dashboard? Great, great question. So this dashboard that we're looking at um, today is a public dashboard. And so on this dashboard, you cannot filter by state, but there is a, a, a essentially an identical dashboard to this that you can log into as a state data manager, and it will show you just your state's motor vehicle crash information. Okay. I just wanted to clarify um, our epidemiologists may not have an account that would allow them to access the other dashboard. So I just wanted to clarify what would be available here. Otherwise, I'll probably be yeah, this is just, the other one. Right, right. Yeah, this okay. is just by region. And then you would need state login credentials to view it by state on a different dashboard. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or has anyone on the call maybe used this in a way that you'd like to share with others how it was helpful? Okay, if we don't have any other questions, let me say, let me actually put my contact information up here. If anyone does have questions, maybe you don't wanna ask in front of the audience, feel free to reach out um, at any point with questions you may have, or if you find something missing or something not clear in a companion guide, please let us know. We'd love to add that or fix it or make it more clear and answer your questions. And then while I have you here, let me also say that we are looking forward to seeing everyone at the annual meeting coming up in August, August 21 to the 23rd. We're going to be gathering in person in Park City. And for those who cannot make it in person, we will have a, a virtual component as well. And so we'd love to have you um, join us. And I know hotel rooms are filling up fast. So if you have not registered yet, I encourage you to register and um, get online and reserve your hotel room. And we'd love to spend some time together with you there. That is all I have. Chris, I'll pass it back to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, everybody, a big virtual round of applause uh, for Lori. That was a wonderful presentation. Hopefully this uh, sparked some ideas and uh, um, some more questions and whatnot that you can come to later. If you, like uh, Lori said, uh, feel free to contact us. This 
um, presentation is uh, being recorded and will be available on our website and our YouTube channel. If you're interested in seeing uh, when events like this are going to take place and other information from the NEMSYS TAC, uh, you can sign up for the Google group, which is a mailing list that lets you know when uh, trainings and uh, uh, meetings are going on. Uh, that is available off of the NEMSYS main website in the upper right hand corner. We're also on most of the major uh, um, social media platforms, which you can uh, find by looking up Nemsis TAC or also going to the homepage uh, Nemsis and going to the lower left hand, uh, uh, lower right hand corner of the web page at the very bottom. We have those handy dandy icons right there where you can click and get straight to those. Um, and if that is uh, everything, um, thank you very much for being with us today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.